As we've been reporting, the White House says it is cooperating with the Justice Department review of classified documents found at Joe Biden's former office at the Penn Biden Center. Biden used this office occasionally in between the end of his vice presidency and the return to the White House. This is the White House is expected, rather the House is expected to vote this afternoon to establish a select committee to investigate what some Republicans are calling the weaponization of the federal government. Joining me now is Jay Johnson, former Department of Homeland Security Secretary during the Obama administration, former general counsel for the Defense Department. It's great to see you. It's just nice to see you. Thank Welcome you. to New York. Well, I'd like to say it's great to be in New York and it's great to be away from this debate. We went through, as you know, 15 rounds to choose a, a speaker until you know, 1.30 in the morning last week. I watched about half of them. <laughs> we had to watch all of it right. so that you didn't have to. But the fact is that we now have Joe Biden acknowledging, the White House acknowledging that uh, back in November, they found some documents. They say a small number of documents in his office on Capitol Hill. They were closing that office down. He used it when he was vice president, or after, he, excuse me, he was vice president. And they haven't said what kind of documents, what level of classification, right. how many, why they didn't report it earlier. They reported it immediately to the archives, which is, makes it completely different from what Donald Trump did. But you know the politics in Washington. You know, this is now beyond what about ism. This is, let's go after Joe Biden and demand that he be investigated. Well, he is being investigated, but demand that he be prosecuted. Well, this certainly complicates things for the Department of Justice, given the investigation of Mar-a-Lago. There's a lot we don't know about what happened with the uh, <clears throat> president's former office, uh, the circumstances, what was there. We don't even know if Joe Biden personally was aware that these were there or was the person who handled them. It could have been somebody on his staff who was working in this particular office who was close to him in in the White House when he was vice president. So we don't, know, we don't even know if Biden himself was, in, was aware of this. Um, I agree with the comments earlier made by Barbara McQuaid. Typically, when you have classified documents discovered in an unclassified space, there has to be an aggravating factor for there to be any sort of criminal investigation or criminal prosecution. Uh, based upon what little we know, it does seem that the Biden situation is very, very different from the Trump situation. The Trump situation, there were a whole range of classified documents discovered at Mar-a-Lago. The aggravating factor is that after two or three requests and two or three certifications, they refused to give them back. And there were still some discovered even after um, the, uh, somebody on his behalf made a, a signed statement that everything had been turned in. So it, it, based on what little we know, it does seem to be a very different situation. You've got Donald Trump demanding that all of his residences be searched. I mean, that is beyond the pale, considering what we know so far. Uh, well, yes, Donald Trump and a number of Republicans will certainly, you know, uh, make, a lot about it, make a lot out of this. And it does complicate things for the Department of Justice. I suspect that were it not for Mar-a-Lago, there wouldn't even be a U.S. attorney appointed to investigate this situation uh, in the Biden office. You handled classified documents all the time, both at the Pentagon and at Homeland Security. There was a chain of custody. You would read a document, turn it over, it would be signed, it would be stamped. There would be people's initials and other, sig other signature. Uh, generally facts. speaking, but do I mean, what is consistent, what is certain, is that any time you're looking at a classified document, uh, you have to be in a secure room, a skiff. You can't look at classified documents in, in non-classified spaces. And so any time I'm looking at a classified document, first of all, it has those bright colored cover sheets. Uh, I know I have to leave it where I picked it up in the skiff. And it's it's not easy to walk out of a room with classified documents. It just, it's contrary to practice. So that needs to be explained. Let's talk about this new select committee because this is going to have extraordinary powers. And this committee will be able to look at all of the top secret intelligence that's turned over to the intelligence committee. Uh, but these people on this right. committee are not properly prepared or, or briefed or cleared for all of that. 
as well as people like Scott Perry from Pennsylvania saying that there's no reason he shouldn't serve on a committee that is investigating the January 6th investigation at DOJ, right. which is investigating Scott Perry. Right. How does that work? Uh, good question. Um, first, I, I, I was in the Department of Defense when we had the uh, turnover to Republicans in the House majority, 2011, and then 2015 when Republicans won control of the Senate. I was at, I was at DHS. Um, you know, what's interesting to me is we've come a very long way in our politics when Republicans used to be the ones who were pro-law enforcement and pro-defense. Uh, now we see Republican attacks on law enforcement, on the intelligence community, on uh, the Defense Department. We've come a long way from the days when the, the school of thought of John McCain, Lindsey Graham, uh, Liz Cheney was the mainstream thinking in the Republican Party. and. It, the thing that I think is important to point out, the rhetorical assaults on the FBI have, in fact, translated into physical assaults on FBI offices, the one in Cincinnati in November, for example. This type of rhetoric does lead to violence. I'm putting on my Homeland Security hat here. And those who engage in this sort of irresponsible, overheated rhetoric ought to be held accountable when the natural chain of events leads to some deranged person out there with a gun that decides to try to take matters into their own hands and attack a field office of the FBI or, or other locations across the country. And so from where I sit, it's not just the absurdity of the politics here. This type of overheated rhetoric in Washington does lead to real dangerous consequences across the homeland.